everybody, welcome to the third episode of the Forgotten Mughal Emperors. Today we will talk about the Mughal Emperor Bahudur Shah I, or also known as Shah Alam I. Personally, I believe Bahudur Shah should have been considered as one of the great Mughals. Though not as capable of a ruler compared to his father Aurangzeb, Bahudur Shah's reign, he was able to keep his father's overstretched territorial dynasty intact by crushing revolts and re-annexing revolting territories. We will get into the life of Bahudur Shah I, and quite possibly you could decide if he should have been considered as the potential seventh quote-unquote great Mughal emperor. There were six great Mughals widely known, Babur, Humayun, Akbar, Jahangir, Shah Jahan, and Aurangzeb. But there were 16 other Mughal emperors. Who were they? Why are they forgotten? Today we'll get into the life of Bahudur Shah I, the son of Aurangzeb, who occupied the throne at the old age of 64 by defeating his younger half-brother and my self-proclaimed seventh great Mughal emperor. Bahudur Shah was born on October 14, 1643, Burhanpur, as the second eldest son of Aurangzeb. He was born during his grandfather Shah Jahan's reign. He was born as Mirza Muhammad Musab. His mother was Aurangzeb's second wife, Nawab Bai, a Punjabi woman who later on in her life lost popularity in the Mughal court as well as her husband and children's favor. His older brother was Mirza Muhammad Sultan. Bahudur became the vizier of Lahore between 1653 and 1659. He became the governor of the Deccan region, in which when raids left by Maratha leader Shivaji Bhosle turned successful, his father was dissatisfied with Bahudur, prevent by not preventing the raids. So he went to he sent a skilled commander, Raja Jay Singh, to defeat Shivaji Bosley. Meanwhile, after his grandfather Shah Jahan's illness, his father and his uncles went to war over the kingdom. His elder brother Muhammad Sultan supported his uncle Shah Shuja. After his father Aurangzeb became emperor, Muhammad Sultan was in prison for supporting an uncle and not his father. He was merely spared of death as he was the son of Aurangzeb. He died years later in prison. Aurangzeb was known to love his sons immensely, so when Aurangzeb learned that Bahudur Shah was planning an uprising to overthrow Aurangzeb in 1670 with the support of the Marathas, Aurangzeb sent Nawab Bai, Bahudur's mother, to dissuade him of the plot. Bahudur went to the court of Aurangzeb, where Aurangzeb had forgiven him but made sure to have supervision over him to prevent any ideas of more uprisings. The story of Munis Farqui described Bahudur at the time as a grudgingly obedient son, which basically means a son who complies with his father's order, albeit reluctantly. Aurangzeb asked Bahudur several tasks, such as defending his rebellious half brother, defeat the Sultan, hit of Golconda. He failed all these missions and started teaming up with the Sultan of Golconda to overthrow Aurangzeb. This was learned by Aurangzeb's spies, so Aurangzeb had Bahudur and some of his other sons arrested. He deprived his sons of proper food and water, as well as clothing and hygiene. Only after six months were they pardoned off. Aurangzeb left his sons, so weren't as strict on them and let them mostly relax without them really experiencing combat. Aurangzeb wasn't being strict on them and experienced them with combat as he was scared they could become powerful and overthrow him, as that's what, exactly what he did to his own father, Shah Jahan. Shah Jahan was strict and led his sons into combat all throughout the region. Eventually, Aurangzeb imprisoned his own father and captured the Mughal throne. Aurangzeb was not wrong on being scared, but he failed to realize that his dynasty became extremely large, so much so that his inexperienced sons weren't really capable to rule the dynasty compared to him. Aurangzeb died in 1707 at the old age of 88. Bahudur Shah was the oldest living son of Aurangzeb at the time of Aurangzeb's death. Bahudur himself was 64 years old. He was angered his younger half-brother Muhammad Azam Shah had ascended the throne. The battle of Jajal between Muhammad Azam Shah and Bahudur Shah occurred. Bahudur was able to get more support and in the end defeated his brother Azam Shah. Azam Shah and his son Bidar Bhatt both died in the battle. Bahudur Shah was coronated emperor of the Mughal dynasty on June 15, 1707. His younger half-brother, Khan Bash, attempted to uprise but was defeated and killed by Bahudur Shah after over a year of struggles. 
Bahadur Shah was able to annex Rajput kingdoms who declared independence after Aurangzeb's death. He successfully annexed the kingdoms. He furthermore recaptured Jodhpur and Udaipur and crushed the Sikh and Rajput rebellion. Compared to his predecessors, Bahadur Shah converted to Shia Islam compared to Sunni Islam and he popularized it around the state. Bahadur had worked effortlessly traveling and crushing rebellions and re-annexing territories his fathers had. He was barely able to keep the kingdom intact. A powerful con- uh, commander, but not as capable compared to his father Aurangzeb. He married his only wife in 1659 and had nine children. Eventually, the old emperor's health failed him. Bahudur Shah died on February 27, 1712, in Lahore at the age of 68. His death officially started the decline of the Mughal dynasty, as powerful nobles started taking more responsibilities of the kingdom and placing the emperor of their choice on the throne. This will be shown in the next video. Bahadur Shah was succeeded by his extremely weak son, Jahandar Shah. Thank you guys for watching the video. Make sure to like and subscribe. And hit the notifications for episode 4, Emperor Jahandar Shah. See you guys. Goodbye.